Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Very special occasion today. Um, <laughs> it's uh, my old friend Adam um, is back. Um, we're doing. We just kind of random, randomly decided to do it because basically what's happened is Adam's got bored and there's no vulnerable women to sexually harass in the community anymore. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> well, there's no pregnant married women around at the moment. That's my problem. So, you know, all, I've, I've got too much time on that. them all away, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, if you, 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 you've you kind of skirted away the southerner, there's got to be some up north somewhere, hasn't there? <laughs> towards, towards Lawn's End. <laughs> Maybe you could well, try getting it on with one of his catfishes. I mean, they seem to be up for a bit of anything. Those people, don't they? Well, yeah, but then I, I'd need to, I need to verify they're officially pregnant. That's the problem. <laughs> and a lot of people have pro issues with sending you their used pregnancy tests. So, <laughs> Sigmund, is that Mr. Edward Snowden? <laughs> It, it is, it is, and we're very upset with with Sigmund in Russia and China. <laughs> I fucking remember that. Wow. Yeah, I so bottled that. Like, literally, I got the opportunity to talk to Lorne, and then within 30 seconds, he had called me a retard and hung up. <laughs> Lorne's not as stupid as we fucking seem, then, is he? Well, cause, well, yeah, because he went, Edward Snowden isn't British, and then you retard, and then hung up. I think that was, that was, that was it. <laughs> hey, so, Lawrence, when it, so, let, I think we've just discovered something there. When it's not an actual female who's involved, Lawrence can actually d d disseminate information. He can actually make decisions, maybe. I, I just I was just shocked he even knew who Edward Snowden is, because he clearly doesn't know what the Simpsons are. Um, I, I was listening to old calls earlier and he's still watching Little House on the Prairie and Three's Company. I'm like, they're shows that sort of went off air before I was born. He still watches Rocky Four on um, on repeat, I think. <laughs> Wait, is that the one with the Russian? Yeah, that's how he, that's actually how he describes the actual... Um... <laughs> How he actually describes the movie. He says, yeah, the Russian one. Um, <laughs> yeah. It would have been good if, like, because um, he thought that Sylvester Stallone was a was a fan of his. You saw, it, it, we could have, like, said, oh, um, we're making, they're doing a remake of Rocky IV and Stallone wants you to, uh, to play the Russian <laughs> or something. <laughs> do you think he could do a Russian accent? I mean, well, I, I was going to say I don't think he does accents, but he does that. Tommy Chong impression, doesn't he? Does he? Yeah, you must. When he goes, oh yeah, man, I'm gonna smoke a joint, man. And it's, it's. I mean, it's, it's a better Tommy Chong impression than I can do, clearly, because I can't do an impression of him doing an impression. But yeah, he does. He at least knows who Tommy Chong is uh, from Cheech and Chong. Oh, actually, Adam, considering we've not really spoke about Lorne for a long time. I don't suppose you were keeping tabs on us. We went over Lorne's book. Was you aware of that? Um, I, bits of it, yeah. I, 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 I'm I, more familiar with Lorne's book than I was before, but I haven't heard it all. Uh, and I think it was when I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago, you said, like, you need to read it. And I was like, I just don't know if I can... No, it is it is down. remarkable. Like, you, you just... It's jaw-droppingly bad. I mean, you can't really... It's stupid. Hello, Amanda James. My good friend is in the chat. Um, is it full of, like, spelling and um, punctuation mistakes? They're not... There's not as many grammar errors as what you might think. It's more the narrative. Like, there's one bit in the book, right, where... And Tiffany Lockhart nearly had an heart attack while she was reading this bit. So there's a bit where... The, I'm sorry to ruin it, I'm sure, like, like you're asked about a spoiler from Lorne's fucking book. But the main protagonist ends up yeah. going nuts. Don't, don't tell me, I, I'm only a third <laughs> <Yeah>. into it. <laughs> spoiler alert, what? spoiler it's alert. Age term. <laughs> the, the main protagonist, protagonist in the book ends up going nuts and trying to kill people for no fucking good reason. And uh, there's one bit where he ties up one of his victims, this young woman, strangely enough, who would have thought to a tree... And um, and basically, he's digging this woman's grave as she's be, as she's tied up to a tree watching, and and he writes it in the book that the uh, the woman that I think was called uh, what was the fucking woman Amber, 
close to Ember. And uh, uh, really? Amber, <laughs> Amber looked at... Um, I can't even remember the guy's name. Amber looked at... Let's just call him Lorne. Amber looked at Lorne with pity. Uh, just like... As if, like, um, she's... As, as he digs her grave. Yeah. She, she went, oh, do you know what... <laughs> I know he's planning to put me in that hole and, and kill me, but fuck, I really feel sorry yeah, for him right now. I mean, what led him to Probably. this? That's what we've got to ask ourselves. What well, led him I to do I this? I know exactly what led him to this. He didn't get some mac and cheese and some deviled eggs, and now he's going to kill me, and I just have to say fair enough. Exactly. I'm so sorry. But that's what's so funny. It was like infuriate Aaron. Oh, yeah, Aaron, thank you, Amanda James. Um, <laughs> um, the, the, the overall narrative of the book... Well, not necessarily narrative because he doesn't have one, but the the overall um, lesson of the book is people are not responsible for their own actions. It's the world's fault for making people go crazy. Is basically what he's saying. Oh, I don't I don't know if you've listened because I've been on a real lawn binge the last couple of days. Yeah, I've not. Um, I don't. I don't know if you've heard the Will Confronts Lawn call, but if you listen to that, the whole way through, he does exactly that. Like, so he wrote a whole book saying, I'm not, re-, like, he never, oh, <laughs> like, I was about to say, he never takes responsibility for his own actions. So I think I must have said that phrase about him 300,000 times by now. But he, the way he excuses things is just ridiculous, and he expects everyone else to like be this certain standard of decency. Yet he doesn't need to, but he can break anyone. I, the, the guys, I, and I honestly thought for a while I was like, he knows what's going on. I was going back and listening to some Winnie calls, and I was like, yeah, the fake marriages, the funerals. I was like, it's just a kid's game, right? He must know at the back of his mind. It's it, He's just doing this for company. But then I hear all this new stuff that Reborn's put out, or Hillborn, sorry, and I'm like, no. His brain is just broken. Yeah, I mean, we, we, well, that's one of the most fascinating things that we all go under is like, what, what, you know, what what's going on in his brain to make a supposedly non-insane person believe the most crazy things. And, you know, we, we talked about it in endless detail. But I remember, like, because, um, you know, I've always been a, not necessarily, I've always questioned the um, calls and whether they're morally right. Of course, it's not right to record someone against the will, but it's not as straightforward as that with law because he is a fucking pedo. He's a, he's a piece of shit, as we all know. But anyway, you know, I've always questioned whether it was the right thing to do. And I've not really... I listened to the... Can I just say, we've got Re- Reborn in the chat, and while I have the opportunity to say thank you for those calls, because they have been the highlight of my last two weeks. Yeah, you've really... I think he owes you money, to be honest, Steelborn. Um, <laughs> I, I do. Next time, if I ever catch... Uh, I don't know if I can donate. If I ever catch Freeborn live, I will definitely donate, because those calls that are... Yeah, Reborn. I thought Freeborn. It's like, he's been given three fucking names already. Um, no, but, like, I've always, like, been a bit sceptical of, like, the call... Not the calls, but the trolling, shall we say. But I have to admit... When I heard the robot, I was like, I think someone sent it me, and I had to have a listen. And I'd, I remember listening to it, and then I just thought, hang on a minute. This guy, like, what was he doing, like, having this conversation with this robot? And then I had to understand what the backstory was, because I didn't understand the context. You know, like, um, uh, what what you know? What did he? Who did he think this robot was? And it turned out it was this Amy Jamie character who'd been in hospital and couldn't speak. So it was. <laughs> but like, yeah, what? lost her voice through COVID. That's not come back for. I don't know how long now. I'm guessing it's over six months. Um. Yeah. It just you can't help but when when I'm initially listening to it, I couldn't help but be just flabbergasted. Which is a bit re- weird, really, because you wouldn't think that anything that Lorne does would flabbergast anyone with how crazy, you know, his scenarios that he finds himself in. But, like, if you get... It's remarkable that at no point whilst talking to this robot, he stops to think, hang on a minute. And you think... <laughs> you, think yeah. you think that, like, he, d- he knows, but he can't because he gets so worked up about it, doesn't he? 
And the thing with the lawn stuff is as well, like when you listen to it alone, it's such a personal thing. They talk to someone else. Suddenly now, like this whole thing is absolutely ridiculous. Like I, I listened to Rod again for the fourth time earlier today and I laughed the most I had because I was hearing bits in it that I, I, well, just, or more just picking up on things like the way he reacts that I hadn't before and it's... There's something so incredibly entertaining. There is. I can't put my finger on it because I have to say, as much as I'm still questionable about the... You know, I don't want to keep fucking going on about it because everybody's bored of it. But, you know, like I said, I've always questioned it. But I can't question it if I find it entertaining because it's like... It's like... It's like... I remember watching people... You know Jeremy Kyle, like there was that documentary about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched that like four times. As yeah, well. interesting. So just for people in the states, we had a Jerry Springer type show over here, and it was really on the borderline of morality, really. And they just humiliated these guests. And I used to fucking watch it. And um, I did as well. It was my my guilty pleasure. Yeah, when, well, I think most I said... people can say that. And what ended up happening, guys. Uh, my state's friends is that uh, he, a, cont- a contestant, a guest who was g- mercy of a lie detector test, ended up committing suicide, and um, and then the show got cancelled. And they did this documentary, and it ripped apart the producers, the presenter, and it played it out to be virtually borderline evil. And I remember watching, thinking those horrible bastards. And then I thought, hang on, I used to watch that show and find it entertaining. So really, there's no difference between me and the people that produce it. They produce it because people find it entertaining. If you know, but people... I guess to an extent, that's the same way you can say we look at lawn because we don't do the catfishing; we just enjoy it. And I know we we had some problems years ago with streams by voicing opinions that weren't always in the the mainstream like, popularity, the mainstream opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. At the same time, like, there's no denying whether you think it's right or not. It's fucking well, entertaining. That's what and I mean. I have to admit, it's ridiculously um, entertaining. Like the Jeffrey one and the Rod call. I can't stop listening. You know, and it's like, if I'm so against it, why do I find it entertaining? And I've really had to think about that. But then I think you could you can say the same about the Jer- I mean you see you're saying like you you had a guilty pleasure for Jeremy Carr. I would say to an extent I was almost a fan. I remember like when I, I was went watching it twice, dude, with one of my exes. I got it. I got a ticket. <laughs> no, to the you book- actually, yeah, but you live you live near the studio. Yeah, so it's a easy. few miles away. Yeah. Uh, but I I when I used to work really weird hours working for EasyJet. And I would sometimes come, like, finish my shift at, like, 3, 4 in the morning. I'd be like, well, there's no point going to bed until midnight because I'm, I'm not working tomorrow or whatever. So this is now my evening. And Jeremy Carl would be on at 9 in the morning. One of those mornings, I went to JD Sports at 8 a.m., bought a tracksuit, went to Oddbins or wherever, bought a six-pack of beer and was sitting wearing my new tracksuit in, like, fanboying to Jeremy Kyle, pretending to be a chav on the show. Uh, so I went pretty far with the Jeremy Kyle stuff. I really got into it. But now looking back, I didn't realize how dark stuff was behind the scenes there. And how culpable are we? If you think about it, right, the masses are entertained. If people find it entertaining, they'll make it right. You can't then enjoy it and criticize the people that watch it. I can still we can still have conversations I can have my opinions because sometimes as humans we engage in things that we know are wrong or questionable or and I think in the community there's a lot of confirmation bias and I think that when my channel got taken down by fucking what's her face and all the cronies you know it was like um a bit of oh well you know we can't question what we do and it was like maybe we were able to since then have grown up conversations about it and we don't always agree and people that I'm very fond of don't have a fucking problem with it and it's like I'm not going to fall out with people it's just an opinion but you can have differences of opinions with people and still you know in fact that's what makes conversation good like if everyone agreed with each other all the time conversation would be boring and so like I think the difference is there you you know you vocalised opinions that 
some people really didn't want to hear, even well, though a lot of people... That's what I mean like... about the conversation bias. I remember about a year ago, we did, um, we did like, me, Amanda James, Tiffany, and Shin did a stream about the catfishing, and we discussed it about the rights and wrongs of it, and it was about three hours, and it was really good, like... And, you know, there were no fallouts. There were, it, it, was, it was just people voicing their opinion, and it's like, I think... Initially, I probably went a little bit too far and got on my eye horse a little bit. I still, I'm not quite there with it. In that. That's unlike you, Andy. I know. Well, fuck off. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I can't. Like I said, I can't. I'm not going to lie. I find those new calls entertaining, and I have to wonder. Oh what no! Pa- I was about to say, like, let's just go back to talking about how brilliant they are and how fucked up he is. Well, that's. Like that, that I was in the shower literally half an hour ago, right? And there was, I think it was the Jeffrey one. And he's, he's raging, and then five seconds later, he starts crying. He's like, well, "You can't do this to me!" And and then and then and then the robot goes, "Go get a condom." <laughs> I was like, in fucking stitches. I couldn't stop laughing. I thought he's gonna like either tell her to fuck off or tell it to fuck off or. He's going to put the phone down and he just carried on talking. Like, no, I can't get it right now or something. I'm like, what? Yeah, he, he says like something. He's like, oh, I'm not going to do that fucking right now. <laughs> but both of those calls have just got some of my favourite, obviously, the title of this. That that internet motherfucker. <laughs> that, that is brilliant. Because I, I was thinking about that, though. And maybe I think too deeply into these calls and spend too much time listening to them. But do you think that's because he talks to her on the telephone? Like, if like if, if the robot had said, well, you're, just, you're a telephone motherfucker, he would have been like, oh. Yeah, that's something we need to talk about. Like, the Jeffrey call, he must have said internet in the space of two minutes about 60 times. Like, those internet bastards... Oh, wait, he doesn't, he doesn't say bastards. He says cart suckers all the time. But it's it's like what would if someone was like watching the TV? She said, "I have been watching the TV, Lauren." It's like what you've been fucking on that electricity again. It's like <laughs> yeah, that TV's gonna gonna t- <laughs> don't get that TV in here now and tell him you want me yeah. more. <laughs> you've been spending time with that electricity again, haven't you? <laughs> it's like, what, the yeah. fuck, what the fuck was on in his brain? Uh, but that's that's like his whole relationship with her and the the inner internet and the and that's the, the rod thing. Again. And I said to you earlier, but I'm going to say it again so I can have credit in a live stream for it. Like I think he sees the internet. It's just this den of temptation. And I think that's because he's not really been on the internet for like 10 years or something. I mean, sort of vaguely, but through other people. He doesn't really understand that it's progressed. Whereas when he was on it, it was just these chat rooms full of dirty old pedos and people pretending to be kids. And I think he thinks like the moment someone gets on the internet, that's it. They're basically saying, right, I'm up, I'm up for sexual deviance. Yeah. Uh, I was just reading the comments. Um, what's um, do you have like a favourite standout moment from all these um, calls? Oh, fine, um, I th- just the rod when he uh, when he starts raging. Oh no! I, but I think my fa- maybe my favourite line in all of it so far is still. <laughs> he said you handled it well. Which is the chef recall, and that's uh, like, and he's. I, I guess then he's showing he's not completely stupid. At least because he does get the the innuendo. Because he's like, are you are you think I don't know what you're talking about? You're handling, but then he gets confused between uh, names, like between nationalities. Sorry, doesn't he? And he's like, you're handling his French sausage, the Italian cunt. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Um, getting back to the internet thing, though, briefly, I think that when you said that to me earlier, that Lorne just sees the internet as a den of temptation, that was very succinct, I like that word. Because I, I think that describes it best, because if you think about Lorne's first real interaction with the internet, it wasn't particularly... It didn't go very well, did it? Let's be honest. Although, 
I think the Amanda James thing was was his first go on the internet, and then the second go. So first he got taken a, as a fool and lost some money, and then he ended up spending five years in prison. Then he couldn't go on the internet. Then when he got out, he was supposed to be banned from it. Then he went on YouTube, started his own channel, and then continually gets catfished off the internet. So he doesn't have a very good relationship with it, does he? So I think you're... you're um, Do you think every time he's been on the internet, it's just been like he's met one, quotation marks, woman... Or and that's his sort of like he just goes on he starts speaking to someone in a chat room or MySpace or whatever it was at the time like I don't like there's no sort of oh do you know what I'm gonna Google the process for making my own beer or something like that there's I think in Lawn's mind the internet has nothing to do with being the information superhighway that's a term no one's used since about 2004 yeah, i think he just sees the internet in relation to relationships like you're gonna you know you just you're either gonna try and chat up a child or you're gonna meet somebody on or whatever it's, it's <laughs> that's all he see he can't understand the it, concept it doesn't matter to him your age because you've gone on the internet and by going on the internet that means you're looking for a fork <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just so f- it, what's so funny is though, like every time he says that word, the internet, it makes me laugh because of his lack of understanding of it. It's like so if you're talking to your mother on WhatsApp, you've been on that internet again. It's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but I think also from his tone though, when he's talking, especially in the rod call, and he's going that internet motherfucker, and it's like, well, you haven't met this person face to face, like. I mean, what I guess with the doctor, he never went that real life motherfucker or anything, did he? Although there was a call I was listening to earlier where he was crying about not being there in real life with someone or other. I don't know, but like, it, it's not. It's like he's sort of saying, "Well, he's got less right over you because you know him through the internet, and I know you by telephone, and telephone yeah. is the." I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking about that. It's like, well, hang on a minute, Lon. How did you meet this fucking robot character? Like, you're speaking to them on the phone, <laughs> which is that fucking electricity. I'm sure again. the internet played a part in it, but yeah, he probably exactly. doesn't understand this. He probably thought they they looked through the the yellow pages and and looked up sort of fat, balding, fifty year old pedos and got his number. Um. That leads us nicely on to the... Um, you've not seen a photograph of this Amy Jamie character. Amanda James sent it to me on the last stream. When we I were haven't. Talking no, I, I, I've got an idea of what she looks like, but that was only from watching someone's stream, and I think there was sort of a vague... I think there was a picture in the background of the picture of him and her together, but I may be wrong. I might have dreamt that. Right, well, it's just... So you're dreaming about Lawn's catfishes? That's interesting. I go to sleep listening to the calls, and it's probably very unhealthy because some. Uh, I sometimes I forget to turn autoplay off, and I wake up in the morning and realise the whole night I've slept, I've been listening to Lorne screaming and crying. I don't think you're the only person that goes to um, that goes to bed listening to the Lorne calls. I think you know, embarrassingly, we all have to admit that we've done that at some point. Um, it's just but it's easy entertainment for like even though maybe the subject of the morality everything is kind of dark it's it's easily digestible if that makes sense yeah because you know it's it's, it's it's not like um, something you have to put your brain on yeah it's a good um it's a good point that actually because there's almost a kind of unreality to it and it's the same feeling i got when i encountered him at court you look at him Almost like he's not real. I can't really explain it. It, it. Of course, he's a real person and he's a human, if you if we can classify him as that. But it's wow. almost like he was designed for our entertainment. It's a bizarre <laughs> thing. I can't really um, explain he's it. Lorne isn't God's gift to women. He's God's gift to us. Yeah, it's fucking weird, man. I'm not trying to like... <laughs> you, you might think that's a bit of confirmation bias so I can now justify doing anything, but of course... Um, I'm just trying to... Right, I've just sent you a photograph of a, the photo that Amanda James sent me that she said um, 
Now, Law might not have actually received that specific photograph, but that's the model, as I understand it. No, yeah. okay, no. So the picture I saw or dreamed of wasn't that hot. Well, that is hot. I'm well, that, that's, that. that's you... as hot as it gets, isn't it, you know? Well, yeah. Talk I mean, no, yeah, she is very fit. I would, uh, yeah. Well, Definitely. considering your track record in this community, of course you fucking would. <laughs> yeah, I can't talk. Yeah, <laughs> We're never going to let that one drop. Do you think he was going to come on? And In fact, shall I see if she's available for Jalon? Hi! <laughs> <laughs> I saw earlier someone said, you said, oh, I've got, you put a post up saying I've got an old friend joining me and someone was like, Joran. Oh, yeah, Imagine... I saw that. <laughs> Imagine that. Me, you, Joran, and Kennedy. What a stream. Oh, my God. The, the dream was, team. Was you on with us when he came on that time? Yeah, of course I was. Wasn't that my stream? Or no, I don't know. Because there was that one stream where you all fucked off and left me with Kennedy for ages. Yeah, we all know how that fucking ended up, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well look if you're going to spend that long on my stream and I want to go you got to do something for it um... <laughs> I remember once right I mean we could safely say it now when she fucking came on a stream you just it, it, it kind of got forced upon me by other people and then she just came in and went hey it was like, uh, hey, Kennedy. And then she went, hey, everybody. And she was like, oh, God, just fucking be quiet, will you? It was so funny. Uh, I hope she's not listening, poor girl. Although, you know, she was a bit of a shit. I don't really give a fuck to Yeah, honest, I was like, just going to uh, say, fact, she's kind of... I was listening to... Um, she's kind of dug her own grave. Uh, the really. nice Irish lady, and I forget who she is, but she was streaming uh, the third part of Wes's video. And she was like, Adam was really calm. I would be fucking scorched earth, motherfucker, if this was me. And I was like, oh, maybe I should have been more angry. But, you know, it's dealt it's with. I we doubt couldn't, it. Yeah, no one's asked anymore. I think the thing is, it's because you can't really... If she was a credible character and lied like she did, there'd be it would be a different matter. But because she's so transparent, it's not as big a deal. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it was, it was, it was stupid on her part, and, yeah, it's dealt with now, like, I don't really want to go back over that, it was awkward enough doing it, it's done. Yeah, uh, no, I just thought, I just wanted to wind you up a bit, that's all. No, no, that's, I mean, I, I, I've got no issue, like, it's out in the open now, if people ask me about it, I'll answer questions about it, but, I just don't, like, from her part, she's probably thinking that was, well, that was a stupid thing, stupid move. <laughs> Stupid move. <laughs> so, you know, but like, if she is listening, I have no remorse. Like, don't be an idiot, and then people won't make you feel shit about yourself for doing shitty things. Yeah, it was it was a it was a strange situation, really. But uh, it's good that you can just fucking laugh at it. You know what I mean? I yeah. I mean. I don't know. People like that are very. I, I guess it showed. Uh, she's very shallow. But we're not here to talk about no, that. No, no, no. I won't jump enough about that. Let's go back to Lawn, shall we? <laughs> um, uh, the other bit that I think it was the same Jeffrey call, right? Um, oh, Shin's manhole is in the chat. Hello, uh, and Shin. <laughs> Hey, dude. Shin came in ages ago and said hi to himself, Andy, because you had been ignoring him for that oh, long. Well, I've so. only just started looking at the chat, so uh, apologies. Because uh, um, I was flicking between that and trying to send you a photograph of Amy Jamie, which uh, I can hear uh, strange. Works, I can yeah. hear strange noises since you've got that photograph. <laughs> Um, oh, geez, not that. <laughs> well, Look, you... come on, Andy. She's not pregnant, and I don't know if she's married. That's so a good point. That's a good point. that might not be my cup of tea. Um, when I heard that Jeffrey call, and he proposed, he's like, "Will you marry me?" It's like it was funny, so I was like laughing, thinking, and then it occurred to me on another level that he's just proposed to a robot. Then on another level, I thought, is he the only person? in human history that's proposed to a robot voice on the phone having never met this person and no idea who they are. I think he's... he's got to Hasn't be... he proposed to 
everyone. Every catfish, even Kayla has iron. Well, I don't know if he put the marriage. Oh no, he planned it, didn't he? Yeah. It was like when you're eighteen. He didn't give I'm it. He didn't even it. ask her. He just kind of <laughs> forced it upon her. <laughs> you're marrying me. Do you know why you don't get a choice? Because you're not eighteen yet. Yeah, you. That... You don't have free will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that is why there is so many uh, marriages happening outside school gates. <laughs> <laughs> but um look uh the last thing you just said andy it reminded me of something and now it's all gone from my right, mind it'll come back it'll come back no we were <laughs> just it was just the total implausibility of someone who isn't insane Mar- doing that well that that's what i was thinking okay uh, it was about like his. I like whenever all of these catfish make kind of a, a, a an allude to other men and that sort of thing. There's never like right, well, fuck you, fuck off. I'll wait for them to chase me. It's like right, well, if I can keep you on the phone screaming and shouting, you can't be with another man. That'll work. And in fact, and just what of a cuck he is was proved in that rod call when Will says to him, like, oh, what if he had shown her his cock? Would you leave her? And he's like, no. Well, what would you have said? Only God fucking knows. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, if you're at that point in a relationship, you may as well say she can do whatever she wants because all I'm going to do is have some stern words with her that no one gives a shit about. Like, he, he really just doesn't understand how people work. Like, if he was in, hopefully, a caring relationship, there would be none of that. I'm going to do this with another man. But that's what's so brilliant about the character of Law, and you can just keep winding him up and winding him up by by dangling other men in front of him and this st- like started with the doctor and then it went all th- like even with like i know you're not so familiar with the winnie stuff but even with that because there was some really great one-liners in that where she would just say something off the cuff that would like make him realize she had done something with someone else <laughs> like oh i just had to touch his cock because he had an itch and then there would be a couple of seconds, and that's probably a bad, not an exact quote, but there'd be a couple of seconds and Lorne would be like, you did fucking what? <laughs> and then you've got exactly what you want from every lawn call. And then, of course, this still continues with Casey and Debbie and now a robot. And he still thinks like screaming and shouting is a way to keep a woman. Like I would say if you're at a point in a relationship and I know based on my recent history, people may not want to take my advice, but it's probably I do. better than some people. Okay. But if you're in a relationship, you shouldn't, like, if you're at the point where you're screaming and shouting because of other men, probably time to move on. Yeah, but he can't think that rationally, can he? He's not got to that. I mean, let's look at this. He's never had a proper relationship. And, you know, I remember when I was really young and I used to see, like, all the people with these girlfriends and um, they'd always be falling out. And I remember thinking, that'll never be me. I'm wiser than that. And when you're in a relationship, you end up falling out and arguing and crazy things happen and you lose. It's only when you're in one that you can really learn about how to handle yourself. You get, you know, you get more emotionally mature. You get mental discipline. Lawn's never, ever had that. So, of course, when you're saying, oh, that's how... He doesn't know what he's... He's no idea what he's doing. No idea whatsoever. In fact, he probably does the opposite. I think we've talked about this on some of our streams with the usual uh, crew. Of He does the exact opposite of what a guy should do in those situations. You know, like the raging and all that. But it is genuinely like feeling that insecure and angry about it that he just completely like what was the one where he went the most mental was it the rod call where he really lost it i mean that's a that's a good question that's a good sort of poll like in which call did he go most mental because i i don't know i'd say the doctor rages came kind of close to the rod call one of the even though i don't listen to the winnish stuff there was a clip that i believe shin sent me Oh no, I heard it. It might have even been in a compilation. I can't remember where he heard it. And 
I think, actually, I think Amanda James... Anyway, never mind. Someone sent me the clip, and it was something about Dan or something, and Lorne was raging at that... Uh, Oh, when yeah, that you one's fucking have brilliant. been fucking on with Dan or something. I was like, wow, he completely. Is it the t shirt with the D on it? I keep... What? Is it what? It, she gets a t shirt with a D on it or something, and it's like D for Dan, and he go, he flips out because. Amanda James will know if she can just. Make... She sent me the clip. She said it was a favourite lawn call, and she'd listened to it a million times. Um, oh, speaking of Amanda James, just said his teeth were tensed quite tight in the rod call, and I think in, in, in the rod call is the first time I've ever heard him. Maybe not a, a loss for words is the right thing, but he's so angry he can like barely form a proper sentence. Like when he tries to talk to Will, and he's like, "Well, well, you don't go a minute, uh, thirty seconds over." Oh, and that's something we, we need to come back to is talking about that thirty seconds. <laughs> but you don't go thirty seconds, and then, yeah, and then. And then he goes, and then he's, Will's like, well, what? And he's like, yeah, you don't go a half over. And he's like, m -m 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 my boyfriend. And I apologize to anyone with real starters. Lorne doesn't have a real starter, so I think I'm allowed to make fun of him. But like the way he does that, and like he almost, his brain isn't properly connecting to his mouth. He just knows he's angry over <laughs> this. Um, some gorilla but, face Gwen has just said it's where he says, "Shut the fuck up about fucking Dan." That was it. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, was I believe the sweater with a D on as well was something to do with American football or something? It actually, had nothing to do with Dan in the long term. Anyway, <laughs> it was just what they said to wind him up. Um, but then Law wouldn't know for someone that what wears lots of sports attire. He literally has no knowledge of sports, does he? But there you go. Um, yeah, Amanda James has just said the one Andrew's talking about is called crying and angry or something like that. I'm wrapped to Bacon's channel. I call it the beat. What's I say? Beetle bug call. It's amazing. Yeah, that was the one. But he's been taken to the brink of insanity if we can if that actually holds any weight that phrase in Lawn's sort of um, in Lawn's world he's been taken yeah. to the brink of insanity so many times that of course he's going to rage like that because he's being fucked with of course and it's all real to him I mean people keep saying oh he knows at the back of his mind but he, if he knew at the back of his mind would he get so upset no, I don't, that's why I think actually the rod call is brilliant because it kind of reaffirms that he really believes all of this is going on. Yes. I, yes. And the thing is, I, I I would say as far back as the Ramona breaks up with Lawn call, I was kind of like, I think he knows what's going on because when like that was built up like it was going to be amazing, and then when she did it, he kind of went, oh yeah, well I knew all along. And it was this massive sort of, you're expecting fireworks and it just turned out to be a damp squib in the end. And in fact, Ramona kind of came off not brilliantly in that because she was kind of too nice to him, I think. But that was, was that the same call as when she breaks up with Lawn to the world? I'm not sure. But yeah, he actually, like, from that call for a long time, I was like, no one surely can be this stupid, can believe all of this, like, fantastical stories that are being woven around him. As brilliant as this tapestry is, surely you, you've got to have a very low IQ to believe that all of that is happening and just without question, because there's so many, like, retarculous things that happen. Yeah, it's... it's I, I think that... It's a really interesting thing to speculate on, is because the, we won't go into this too much. We don't want to start getting too philosophical about this. But when you really think about the human psyche, it's very easily manipulated. Like there's all these experiments been done. That's why magicians are, are very easy at manipulating people. There's a book I'm reading at the minute called Stolen Focus, which is about how people's attention has been fucked up by social media and whatnot. And it's yeah. very easy to fool even intelligent people if they're manipulated in the right way and their attention is, is averted. And with Lorne, he's so desperate, so desperate. He's so lonely. He's so insecure. 
it's not really that surprising that he can believe these things because he, I think he will fall in love with anyone that gives him some kind of attention that he believes is um, a worthwhile mate. In his world, a worthwhile mate is 13, 12 plus that is a female. That's pretty much it. And he even said it, I think there's some honesty that came from him once that when he said, because it was said to him, well, Kayla didn't say anything to you. You know, there was no conversation. There was no personality. What what was it all about? And he just said, well, it was just someone who was there, you know, and I well, think that's yeah. true, isn't it? Like you, you almost, when you start thinking about how lonely and desperate he is, the human side of me comes to the surface and thinks, oh, that poor bastard. How but it's all so no, I'm at the it? point now, though, where I'm like, he's so fucking self-centered and selfish, and I think that's just been proven over and over again that he... I, th- I would rather agree with your statement earlier that he's been put here for our entertainment. <laughs> well, there's the confirmation bias again, but, yeah, I mean, it, it is... I understand why... Because, you know, when I do these streams, it's only really me that has that questions the cat. Well, not questions it, but... Most people have the same view. Who cares? It's long. He does it to himself. Of course, he does. He should know better. He really... Sh- I mean... Well, this is... An- I remember, like, I was telling you about my Gran Turismo friend earlier, and it reminded me of Lorne, because it just seemed like that guy had no room for, like, understanding when someone was criticising, but not not to be mean, but saying, like, you know, I don't like it when you do this, could you not do that? And he just didn't get it. And Lorne is the same, like, he he doesn't seem to have the ability for self-growth as a person, but yet he doesn't want to be, he's not autistic, he's, he's, as far as we're aware, he's not on the spectrum, I know, like, there's a lot of theories about fetal alcohol syndrome or whatever, but, you know, he's not claiming disability, he is, a, in theory, a functioning member of society, obviously with stipulations that most members of society don't have, but he is a functioning member of society, and if, you keep doing it, the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, in fact, I guess that makes him insane, doesn't it? But, like... People take that, that definition th- too literally. But, yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. It's... it's There's there's good arguments on both sides. It's like, come on, dude. There will always be someone that wants to fuck with him. The world, you know, there's always people that want entertainment. But he does allow them yeah, to fuck with he, yeah, him. It's like, he, he, he welcomes it. It's like he could just hang up the phone and, and he could go. as well, and, it's all for his own selfish purposes as well. There's no... Like, exactly. If it was so for it, with the, the Chris Cham comparison has been made quite a bit, probably by us quite a bit when we used to do streams on your channel. Yeah. But that's a different matter because you never really did anything to... Um, to um, hurt anybody, Chris Chan. Didn't Wait, you? who? He was just bullied. Chris... He was out and out. I don't, I don't want to get. You're obviously not up to date with the Chris Chan saga because oh, I don't want to get into that now. It's got too fucking dark. Right. For me. Okay. Well, let's quit. But the point is, <laughs> some people <laughs> yeah, have been yeah. trolled and who haven't necessarily at the time, as we understand it, did anything wrong. Whereas Lawn is a sex offender and a scammer. So of course, um, it adds another totally different perspective on it on the surface of it it is bullying behavior but this is who lauren is and his culpability makes it a bit different potentially doesn't it well you could as well and uh, to maybe be speak a little bit controversially you could to an extent say there was one of these relationships he could have turned to his favor anyway had he actually been a decent guy because I think we all know that someone who catfished him was kind of into him, or at least that's my opinion anyway. Uh, and they went to visit him. Well, I guess no one knows what actually happened there, but if he, I think he's just incapable of growth. I think, like, growth... But why, though, is that... I mean, obviously, we can't answer that question. It's important to me... Because he doesn't want to be, because he's a selfish. Yeah, but arsehole. that's not. It's well, that's big... not. The, that's not the same, then, is it? If that is, it's not that he's incapable. It's that he's unwilling. It could. 
I'm not totally. Yeah, but that makes everything okay. Well, maybe not everything okay, but they're like, that's, you it know. It's a different if, spin if on it, doesn't it? Take... Well, it puts it. So yeah. put it this way let's say. So I'm, I made this comparison on another stream once, but I'll say it again. There was a, I was reading a book about um, fear, and there were some experiments done on these people's brains. It was pretty fucking wacky where they immobilized a certain part of the brain, and fear disappeared. So they no mm. longer had any fear of anything. It, they, they couldn't be scared. It was really freaky because part of the brain wasn't working. I can't remember how they did it. It was pretty... It wasn't... Anyway, um, I was thinking, is the part of the brain... I'm fucking going on one here. This is going out on a... You know, <laughs> but... Um, what if what the part of the brain which enables growth and lawn isn't there? Do you know what I mean? It, it, is that, that a disability? Yeah, but surely that would be a known disability by now. And it would... Well, I no, mean, you... This... Maybe, I mean... You've got to admit, we, we're still theorising now because we still can't grasp why this guy, you know, puts himself through that. But it, I, I think he maybe not enjoys it, but I think is you've got... Let's try and look at it, and this might be quite difficult, but let's try and look at it from his perspective. If you're a guy... You, you, when you look in the mirror, you don't see this sort of fucking Goonies. What was the guy in Goonies' name? You know, uh, oh god, sloth, sloth oh, yeah. looking, um, looking back at you. He looks in the mirror and he sees like fucking oh, who did Justin Timberlake? He looks in the mirror with his baseball cap on and he's all like, "Cry me a river," and that's and he thinks he deserves to go out with like that some sort Instagram of Instagram model that I sent you. Yeah. And uh, and that's what he believes he deserves because and and whether you can say that's a personality disorder or or narcissism or whether narcissism is a personality disorder that's a whole fucking different discussion for another day, but it's still I mean narcissists aren't good. Let, I mean if we're gonna take the piss out of people, let's make fun of narcissists, and I would say that is definitely a trait that Lorne has. Well, we we speculated does he have narcissistic personality disorder, which was a real he ticks every fucking you speculated box. on it i mean i'm not a psychologist but if i was i would definitely give him that one yeah it's really interesting um and i i do have to always revert back to this and i know people are rolling their eyes but i really do believe that sometimes certain people are subjected to things when they're younger that really is that there's no getting out of it the fuck for life it, you know it's pretty when you're young and you you're in you know you're growing up to the age of seven and even beyond, if certain things are done to you at that point, it's irreparable. Like, you're so malleable at that age. And I think yeah. that Lorne is a... Is it, is it, and this is why I always would go easy on him. And, and I, I mean, not that it fucking matters, it's just my opinion, you know. But, like, you know, I fucking love to know what happened to him. Like, did some... And I know people will always go, well, such and such a thing happened to me and, and I didn't end up trying to screw a kid. I, I get it, you know, but every situation is different and it just interests me of what happened, you know. And it's it's very easy for two armchair psychologists like you and I to sit here and and say and laugh at him or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. you don't know, maybe he did suck his brother's cock when he was little. <laughs> I never really wanted to go over that on these streams, but he just came out with it. <laughs> that was so funny. Um, well, could you why, just why? Why I, didn't you want to go? No, I, I just didn't feel it was right to discuss the, the abuse allegations in detail because it brings other people into it, and you know he can say we what don't he know wants. which brother for definite. As long as it wasn't Roy, because I think Roy's a bit of a secret legend. Uh, yeah, oh but... yeah, I think he's quite well actually thought of by some people. Could you just speak to people in the chat for like a minute, um, Adam? I've got to take yeah. a very, very, very quick call. I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, right. As long as you can do the same when uh, when you come back, because I really need a pee. Yeah, so, sure, uh, sure, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, uh, yeah. Right, let's let's and sorry guys, I haven't said hello to because there was lots of awesome people. Like, wow, Andy has like big fans now. When I used to stream with him, there was just sort of 
<laughs> no one anyone heard of and now clobber and wes and uh every oh and earlier i mentioned the nice irish lady by the way guys that is high morn i could i completely forgot and you know i should always uh remember high morn's name is because when i first listened to a high morn stream i was playing elden ring and i just entered castle morn which is literally spelt the same way as she spells high morn and i know it's a quote from uh winnie cool high morn uh but yeah uh so uh guys uh it's it's just me talking on someone else's stream this is probably the longest i've had to talk for a long time in a, on, on a stream on my own for a while so uh help me out here Sorry about uh that. ask some questions are you back already thank fuck for that because it was it was not going well all right that's not usually good at fucking talking to yourself aren't you uh, well I, I am but it's been a while to be honest so oh, I that's was just right. saying you're a that's bit out of practice aren't you yeah, I am. I am. You know, I need to need to get that that confidence back. Right, I'm gonna uh, use the bathroom quick, Andy. So if you would talk to your own subscribers for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll just say a few hellos. Uh, Andy Birdcat. Um, have I seen you knocking around before? But anyway, it's good to see you. Um, Let's see who else is knocking about. Hello, Dan Jones. It's good to see you. And William Fetters, all the usual crew are here. Um, I hope you're enjoying this little... Oh, hello, Nick. I hope you're enjoying this little... Um, this little trip down memory lane with Adam because we, we used to do... We used to do videos. I think there was a point... And I always say the peak of Lornography, the greatest part of it ever was when he had his YouTube channel and he was responding to people in person. That was, oh my God, the golden age of lornography, I think I'll say. is um, Just think about that for a minute, right? There's so many amazing moments that we've had with this guy, but think about, just think and, and ponder on this for a second. A, a paedophile, a convicted one, not that... <coughs> Maybe it's going too far because you had to go through with the app. But a convicted sex offender has his YouTube channel, tries to launch clothing range, and also enrages at people when it when they're trying to have a go at him in the comments section. And he ends up losing his shit and throwing his toys out of the pram and just you know talking to people on an individual basis, thinking he could somehow defend himself. Remarkable. You that you back at him. I am, I am, yeah. I was uh, just talking was... about the golden age of lawnography when Lorne responded to people individually on his YouTube channel. Oh, well, I think that, well, it was definitely one of your favourite videos was when we went through his comments. We only got about eight down and we were 40 minutes into the video because everything was hilarious. Oh, but the best was the one where someone put a quote from the chat log and he just flipped on them. It was Those an exact were the copy and paste. That's what was so funny. He <laughs> went, you fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> he was raging at his own speech. It was an exact copy and paste from what he said in the chat log. <laughs> but he didn't even understand. He was like, you fucking perverts coming here and saying this on my channel. He's like, why, why can't would you, you say people? this disgusting shit about a child? And it's like, dude, this is from your brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is just remarkable. There, and it goes in hand in hand with his gullibility. The fact that I've just made that word up. Uh, well, his gullible nature is that you know him not being able to. Gullibility grasp, is a word. Yeah, that him not being able to grasp the catfishing and also total lack of understanding of the context of what he did and how it relates to other people, how they feel about it. You weren't, I don't think you, you might not got to hear about it at court, but when the judge was giving him a dressing down before he got sentenced to another six months in prison when me and Shin and crew were there, the yeah, judge yeah. said to him, you're never going to win with these people. You're never going to win. Like, you, you know, people love the children and you did something and he didn't say it in a malicious way he says like good luck mr armstrong and he, he summed it up perfectly and he's never it's just i find it remarkable that he's never fully understood it he's never you know why would you go on youtube after doing what do you think like james rutherford had start his own youtube channel and trying to flog t-shirts with you know 
Like, I'm going to get counselling written on it or something. You know, it's like, what? Mm. Sorry, Luke. Uh, just two seconds. My dad's calling me. I just need to check it's not an emergency. Or... Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, we're not uh, going to be doing that much longer, guys, but uh, we just wanted we just wanted a bit of a, a catch-up and for me and Adam to go over the calls because, like like I've said, I, 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 can't, I have to admit, I have... I have to listen to long calls while I'm in the shower. I find it very um, um, relax, not relaxing, because it gets me kind of wound up sometimes, and I end up laughing and all that. But it's very entertaining. It's a good bit of escapism. I think that's maybe why we find long calls so um, entertaining, is that when we listen to it, as well as the humour, we can also think, I'm so glad that isn't me. You know, you you can just kind of instantly feel better about your own situation, no matter how bad it gets. You can go, fucking hell, you know, because a lot of people. At least I'm not Lorne Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the classic. I I think that's that's what most people feel. I think that's the most sort of common. <laughs> Sigmund has just done an exact copy of what common it was that enraged Lorne. I think that is. The right one. Lawn A, 20014, 10th the 7th, 7, 11, 44, and 8 p.m. Are you anxious to touch my penis for the first time? <laughs> Question mark. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you fucking degenerate <laughs> bastard. Why would you say that on my comments? He actually, he actually said, fucking son of a bitch. I'm sure that's what he said. And then he just went. Yeah, that was it. It was definitely son of a bitch because that's such a lawn insult. Like lawn, lawn's insults. I think we can we can re- motherfucker, son of a bitch, cocksucker. That motherfucking son of a bitch, cocksucking internet motherfucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so funny though that like just it's it's got to be one of the funniest things ever. Like just to just. For him to be enraged is funny enough, but to enrage at himself, like, what, what's he raging at? <laughs> How dare you fucking quote one of my previous fucking comments? But I don't oh. even think he knew someone was quoting. I think he actually. I thought... don't think he, he understood it was a quote, I, I, or if I don't, I, I I'd like to think he didn't. I'd like to think he thought someone was just writing something weird, and he was like, "You fucking son of a bitch." <laughs> 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 Why are you writing this here and not buying my shit on GoDaddy.com? <laughs> I remember one comment that made me laugh for ages. They just said, did you ever get to that job interview on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I got a job interview on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and I must admit, I was looking at Casey Moreau's channel, and oh my God, she gets some trolls, and some of it goes too fucking far. Like, I, oh yeah, see, I only ever went on there once. Yeah, I bet you did. And um, <laughs> but um, no. Oh. no, but really, like you know, some people, it was like getting to the point of sexual harassment. But someone said something oh. once, which fucking it just said, I, I thought you had plundered. It just fucking made me piss. <laughs> did you hear the uh, the interview that Chris Hansen did with her? No, but I did watch that really interesting video she did on her channel about the anniversary of TCAP, which I thought was quite... Like on her channel? Yeah, she's got her own... She does, like, uh, mindfulness and she does yoga and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I don't know. Last time I saw her channel, it was a good couple of years ago at least, and there was, like, a surfing yeah, you've video. You've been banned and... from that channel now, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Uh, she uh, she doesn't want me there anymore, no. especially now she's pregnant. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's one of those internet motherfuckers that made her pregnant as well. Um, yeah. well that's. I mean, that, that would be quite difficult, though, for an internet motherfucker, to, unless he posted his semen to you. I think Dan Jones has just said something that we need to touch upon, which we haven't, is that... Uh, She's in a relationship with Lorne, Andrew, referring to Casey Moreau. Just when we thought that, like, you know, he couldn't get more stupid, just think. This goes back to, when I mean, we're talking about the same thing, right? How would someone believe that, just put, right, just 
put Casey Moreau on her own as a person out of the TCAP context, first of all, you've got to buy into the fact that Lorn believes that a girl as attractive and as accomplished and as well-rounded as her would be interested in Lorn. That's remarkable in itself. But the same girl that helped to get him locked up, who was on to catch a predator. And also, why would he want to go out with someone that sent him to prison for five years? But I I think, to be honest, it was the perfect kind of, like, catfish for him because it, it perfectly plays into his narcissism. He's got so, such little awareness of pop culture. Like, you couldn't sort of say it was like a... I mean, he probably would have believed it if you said it was Jodie Comer or Anya Taylor-Joy. He probably would have believed it. But he probably wouldn't know who those people are. However, he knows who the decoy was at the sting house. He knows she was hot. So that's why it plays perfectly into his narcissistic, delusional personality. Yeah. I think the, the spin was put to him that... I, can't, I, I don't know exactly. Someone told me how it, how it came about the Casey thing. And apparently, like, she said something like... Um, you know, when you were there in the house, I, I felt something for you when you were sat there. <laughs> he just bought it. <laughs> it's just... Of course he would. I don't think you'd even need to be like, oh, yeah, I saw you and you were one hot fucking pedo. Let's get it on. <laughs> <laughs> I felt a bit. I, he, I wanted to jump that. in that massage chair with you. Wow. Exactly. She she was just the whole time like she ran off to get Chris because that's what she'd been paid to do. But if it was up to her, she would have been on her knees. Yeah, there's something very wrong with that man. It is remarkable. But and you know what I was thinking about as well. <clears throat> how much think about how much content we've got from this guy, even without the catfish. I know there's tons of winning material out there. I don't like it. Lots of people do. Um, you know, and I do. I, I think you're off on the winning material because you almost have a personal history. I thought about that, but I just maybe that's true. But I just can't stand listening to it. It's not. I don't find it like funny. The voice is grating. I'll it's give just, you that. No, but... I can't stand it. Like, like I said, it was. It's just never. I've never listened to it and wanted to listen to more. Like, but that, I think with the winning calls, like if I can just say some of the one-liners like the quick one-liners she got away with that other people didn't because she was just such a ridiculous character but there's stuff she would like she would just turn around to him and be like you fucking pedo and then he'd be like oh, oh i don't like you saying that and it's like it's nice like when he got to say kind of stuff a bit more brutally than others did and while i would say that certainly the robot plays him the best. Winnie like went for went for the jugglers. blows and jabs that were very quick and short, and some of them were also incredibly funny. It'd be and you know like earlier when you said oh I never wanted to talk about the brother incident and like she was she would just throw that in randomly all the time like oh is that because you were sucking your brother's cock? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, d I do get it. And to be fair, what I will say, without having listened to a lot of them, because I can't really, some of those narratives that were being played out were, were very funny. I must admit, you know, like weddings and funerals and long lost triplets and all kinds of bollocks. And it's just like, it was like a, a twisted soap opera that Lorne was caught up in. And what amazed me is, he thinks he has full blown normal relationships with people that he only ever speaks to on the phone. Like, you know, it's it's remarkable. Yeah. But also, I think he thinks as well, as soon as one of them says they'll marry him, that's it, he's got them on, on lockdown. Do you know he, like, had a wedding ring on for this Winnie character? Well, didn't he uh, save up, like, four or five grand or something to did, buy a ring? Did he I don't really know this whole grand. story. What, Lorne did? Yeah. Well, somebody's going to have to confirm that in the chat, because did I didn't you, know anything. Did you not know about this? Surely, like... Uh, yeah, no, he, he bought... Uh, Ember collected it when her and um, Dan... Uh, sorry, I can't remember what he, the name he actually went by was now. That's completely gone from my mind. Is it Crestfall? I should remember. 
Crest, thank you, yes, Crestfallen. When her and Crestfallen went to visit him, she collected the ring, I believe. But I get all my information from Temple of Teacap and YouTube videos. So if I am not factually correct, don't b- blame me. But yeah, I believe he saved up. A, was the ring not for Jamie Amy, though? Uh, and it was like oh, a, a I couple don't of fucking grand. No, no. I'm, I'm just. I don't know. There's, 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 no, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't even know what the timeline is. There's some people out there that do. And I get it because it is a, in, a, in essence, it is kind of like a real life soap opera, but soap operas usually have more than one person that's involved in it, whereas it's just him, really. Um, but yeah, the, the Casey thing was just amazing. I couldn't believe it when I heard that. What, and, and why do I get surprised? It's like you'd think that. No, I, I, but at the same time, you still have to say, like, the brilliance of the people who are contacting him and making him believe this. With this, well, that you know, I think they're all brilliant, to be honest, because... You ass lick. <laughs> yeah, but they provide me with so no, much dude, entertainment. No, dude, if that said the way you feel, fair play to you. And I, you know, I have to say, I, the, the robot thing, if it's that, if that's deliberate or just part of the narrative... I think I'm going to go a bit of my usual philosophical bullshit here and say it's almost symbolic, the robot thing. If that was done deliberately, it's genius because it highlights perfectly the hollowness of Lorne. He's talking to this robot that is even worse than Kayla in some degree. I love that it's a male British voice. It's crazy. And the fact that on the videos there's just a picture of this robot... And he's so emotionally invested in it. And it it captures perfectly what Lorne's state of mind is. And the total, how can I put this? I had the word in my mind. The superficial nature of his relationships. There's no substance to them whatsoever. So the robot represents that because it's got no soul. And it's just an but empty all, electronic all voice. All Lorne's re- relationships are like this sort of high school show or not even high school like primary school showing of i don't know if you ever did this andy like but like when i was a kid at primary school like i I got a girlfriend and then everyone took the piss and then we did a fake wedding ceremony and that's what lawn's whole life is like like if i'd never grown out of being a six seven year old boy pretending to marry a girl and getting angry because she talked to adam hardcastle that bastard, because he had the same first name as me, but a better last name. Um, and, and like, but I was six years old then. I got older and I realised, like, people aren't really worth it. And you've got to love yourself before anyone else or you're going to be a dickhead for all of your life. And I look at law and, I'm, and in fact, what I've just said there is probably the simplest terms for most people learning about themselves. And that goes on and on with what we said earlier about the fact that he's had no experience and that's why I revert back to the sympathy every now and again and I know some people would never feel sorry for Lorne I get it because of everything he's done but there are a little bit creeps to the surface sometimes I think and it's not just Lorne I feel sorry for it's like any human that has to endure that kind of existence I would feel like if he checked himself into a facility and said look nobody can't do that because he doesn't think there's anything wrong with him he can't see that he can't say oh I've got a problem here the only time he's ever kind of done that was when he said, I've got to go to counselling, and we kind of, most people think that he just said that because Chris was on his tail, which, of course, (laughs) is just good evidence for that. Well, I, I think he's, I I think he's an adult human, and he's he's just not, (laughs) I mean, it's so conflicting, the whole thing, because it's like, how can someone allow themselves to become this way, and yet act this way, which proves that they're an absolute horrible human. So there's no real justifying, well, certainly not for his actions. And then you go, well, are the people making him be this way? Uh, But he's always going to be a bit like that, isn't he, from the start? And we're just fortunate enough to see. Do you know what would be remarkable? What would be really, really interesting? I made the analogy once when we did a stream of if Lorne went on a real date, it would be like releasing one of the orcas from SeaWorld and plunking it into the ocean. It would probably die. 
you know, it wouldn't. It... Do, do you do you know what Lord is? It's fucking Alan Partridge and David Brent on crack. Hmm. I think he's like so like he is, and I think that's why we're both drawn to him. Obviously, you're a fan of Gervais and and Coogan, no? Not, I mean, he's a no, Manchester not really. Lad. I mean, I, Brent's character is genius. There's no doubt about that. And I think the comparison with Lorne is a total lack of social awareness. He has no idea how people see him, yeah. apart from in the Brent movie when he said to somebody, do you see me as a prat? And I weren't happy with that line because it kind of, in my opinion, weren't happy with it. Like, fucking Gervais is going to be... But that's off. the difference, isn't it? David Brent has the capacity for personal growth, so he, to an extent, is a likeable character, whereas Lorne does no, not Lorne's have that. No, Lorne's got no likeable traits whatsoever, whereas Brent has, because you So that see... line might have upset you in the context of that comedy, like, oh, well, I don't want the character to have that much progression no, because he becomes didn't. less it of was, a... It was that... In my opinion, Brent's character was white like he was. He was almost like autistic because he just couldn't see how other people perceived him. And Lorne certainly can't. But Brent, all Brent ever really wanted was to to be popular. You know, he wasn't malicious. Yeah, he wasn't, to be liked. Yeah he, yeah, he even said it. You know, he wanted to be liked. He wanted to be popular. Oh, okay, well, yeah, but imagine Lorne in a... Like, let's, let's take reality out of the equation for a moment imagine lawn somehow ended up a, the boss of a small call center of 15 people Fuck would he me, I'd not take be a job terrible? there immediately i quit my job <laughs> and i'd go work there no <laughs> but would he not be very brent like would he not like couldn't like the moment if i worked in there as one of the workers if i was the tim canterbury of lawn's office i'd be like yeah i can manipulate You'd be the, the gareth let's get this right <laughs> well yeah well i tell you what i know what to do with a man in my foxhole um <laughs> he's entered your hole <laughs> <he's>... <laughs> if a gay jumped on your back would you toss him off andy <laughs> well you're really asking two questions there um, <laughs> um... yeah I, I, I don't, have we ever compared lawn to brent before it's interesting but it is I think we have. Yeah. I think we must have done. Yeah, it is quite simply a lack of awareness of, of which many it's is usually an artistic trait. Um, because you watch, uh, have you ever watched Undateables? Yeah, I love the Undateable. Oh shit, I should, <laughs> shouldn't say that with such enthusiasm. <laughs> Fuck. But um, oh, that's interesting. I've got um. There's, you learn about autism on that and how it affects some people. And, and oh, but those guys are really sweet. Like, and I'll be honest, like I did watch that with a, a degree of shade and Freud at the start, and I was like, kind of laughing. You horrible at bastard. I well, I know. At least like I I, I can I, I can live with myself with that. But I but a lot of them turn out to be really lovely and really nice. And, yeah. And Whereas Lord cool. isn't. And that's his problem, yeah. isn't it? And that's why the catfishing will continue as long as he kind of, you know, buys into it, is because there'll always be someone they'll want to do I it. I mean, I'd love to see Lorn on the Undateables, but I think he just, you know, he would turn up and the person would be like, you're not good enough for me. And then he would scream and cry and, and then try and spy on her affair. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it is a very interesting... Um, hmm. Just kind of wondering if I'd love to question Lorne about his antics, but there's just no fucking point, is there? You know, like, like to... It's been done again and again. Tiffany really tried to crack into that brain of his. Well, do you remember the Ethan interview with him? Yeah, like, but that was, that was not a good interview, you know. Um, no, no, but... I w that's the only way he's going to open up to someone. Like, the moment a man confronts him, like, the only way he'll take confrontation from a man now is if they are related to the catfish he is dealing with, which is what is so great with, like, the robot. Yeah. And then Will can jump on or, oh, do you, 
I don't know if anyone has a link to it as well because I've been trying to find it for a while and I can't remember the title, but that call where he's having phone sex. Oh, you won't know, Andy, because it's a winning call, but he's having phone sex and then Dan comes in right as he ejaculates and Dan just goes like, hello? And Law's like, what the fuck? And he, oh, it's so like... <laughs> I'll have to fucking listen to so that. so good. Oh, I mean, it's disgusting, but it's brilliant because it's like, like he's just been having phone sex with Winnie, and then she calls up Dan right as he's on the edge, <laughs> and Dan goes hello, and I was like, oh, what the fuck is Dan doing here? <laughs> right? Now? Can you? Can, do you know what call that is? You'll have to send it. Send it me. I don't. I don't. And I may have made it sound better than it actually is, but it's along those lines, <laughs> and it's fucking amazing because then it carries on like afterwards like the awkwardness is like oh dance <laughs> brilliant i'll have to have a listen i'm gonna have to start wrapping it up it's getting a little bit late here um oh yeah sorry dude no it's all right i've got um i've got work in the morning um oh that's i'm gl- really glad peter o'keefe has just brought this up i don't understand why lawn's lawyers haven't asked for a psychi- um psychiatric evaluation What's funny about Lon's perception of lawyers, he seems to think that lawyers can resolve any problem at any point. It's like... Oh, those, no, but so can probation officers. Like, those YouTube people, I'm going to get a lawyer on it. What does he think, like, his lawyer is going to be able to sue YouTube and get him, like, 50 million? <laughs> oh, well, let's not forget that uh, Jason Blaha personally took down Kennedy's channel. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't think Lawn getting a lawyer for YouTube is that ridiculous. <laughs> that was fucking And what's hilarious. that, you ask? Who is Jason Blaha? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'm glad we ended on a Kennedy note. Yeah, um, uh, sorry, Solo Solo said, I thought Andrew stopped talking to Adam. And sorry, Solo Solo. It, it was the other way around. Basically, I called up Andrew and I was like, hey, you've been doing too many streams with Shin. Yeah. Get that. Italian motherfucker in front of us now and tell me who you want to stream with and and he never replied for two years yeah and I'm not allowed to stream with Shin anymore now that was part of the deal of Adam coming yeah. out so well yeah exactly I said I said have you been streaming with that internet motherfucker Shin's koala <laughs> oh dear um so it's been a pleasure. I could, we could have talked about this, cracked a beer open, and just fucking carried on forever, couldn't we? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, I'm uh, any time, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll even stream with that internet motherfucker. <laughs> so. Why not? Why not? <laughs> exactly. Why not? It's but no, fun. no, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, thanks for having me, Andy. Well, thank you for coming on, dude. It's it's been a long time, and it, it you know it br- it takes me back to the. Uh, to the glory days of lawnography when we used to make those videos and we'd stream randomly drunken on a Friday night. Well, well, I don't don't mean to sort of uh, expand your already ever-increasing ego, but But. uh, someone did, did, and not even, it wasn't me, let me say this, it wasn't me, but someone put a post on the Temple of Teacap and their post said... Uh, what was your favourite era of lawnography? Mine was when Andy and Adam did YouTube videos. And that was like the original post, so someone really liked us. No, at least I think one a few people did. I think, um, I think we bounced off each other quite well, in meta- metaphorically speaking, of course, although, you know, oh, well, we don't like yeah. to talk about yeah. my trips to Barcelona, do we? Um, <laughs> not anymore. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that got a lot to do with us not talking. I mean, the sexual ex- abuse we said we wouldn't talk about at yeah, all. Yeah, it's been kind of obvious. What we were able to do, we, we created the Kennedy situation as a deflection for what was really going on. <laughs> yeah. Kennedy's just been thrown under the bus by us. <laughs> she yeah, has, she's just she? an innocent guy. <laughs> Poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> she's right into YouTube now. You're taking my channel down. <laughs> They did this to me. Right, I'm going to get Jason Blah and I'm going to fuck them both up. <laughs> That's you and me versus Kennedy and Jason Blah tag team wrestling next. Oh, yeah. I love a bit of that. Do you remember, what was that old MTV wrestling thing that they did? Uh, celebrity Deathmatch. Yeah, it'd be like that. Would <laughs> I'm just picturing that. Well, in yeah, mind. since it's not celebrities. Yeah. Um, Long with his cap on and his stupid earpiece. Um, oh, imagine that to catch a predator death match. 
Oh, how good would that oh, be? You've just... Oh, crazy Trini for you versus Jean-Pierre Wary. <laughs> what crazy tale can he come up with to stun his opponent into submission? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jean-Pierre Wary with the art of confusion. <laughs> just be like stood there in a daze with birds flying. <laughs> the red as he starts talking shit. Yeah. Well, I met a Mexican on a bus and it was a monorail and then... Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what's going to happen. Crazy Trini's just going to look at him and be like, fuck that, I'm going to fuck a cat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he comes up with his cat. <laughs> like the crazy cat lady off The Simpsons who just starts a chucking cat cats at people. A of whipped cream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have to do a stream just about fucking Predator Celebrity Wrestling or something. Oh, let's do that. No one else has ever done that. Right, like, you've heard it here first. This is patented. We're going to have to, like, just talk out the Celebrity Deathmatch. Celebrity Predator... Sorry. Pr- predatory Deathmatch. I don't know. Oh, that that's genius! That I'm, uh, that that's really. It, 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 I'm just I'm actually picturing in my head John Pierre Weary boring someone with the talk and them just being stunned, like with the crazy story. That's so fucking funny. La La Grace has just said you two always did the funniest ones. Their non-stop laughing made it uh, that much more entertaining. Oh, thank you very much. The yeah. problem with that is though, Lala's worked us out. Like before we start the stream, we just say laugh for half of it, and then we don't need to talk for the other bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a good, um, <clears throat> it's a good stun tactic. Maybe we can introduce that on celebrity wrestling. Right. Okay. Really, I'm gonna have to go now. Um, thank yeah. you very much, Adam. It's been a pleasure. We'll sort it again soon. Yeah, you do, we do. Long overdue. <clears throat> but thanks, dude, and everybody in the chat. Thanks for coming along. I know it's not our usual type of stream and it was just a random thing but it's been good fun so thanks a lot please leave um any comments um and let us know if you've enjoyed it once the video's done so thanks guys i'm not sure when the next one will be because